Hi, I'm Kurt Smith, and welcome to App Talks, a series of conversations with Salesforce customers on how using business apps from the App Exchange can help you manage all aspects of your business. Today, I'm here with Charlie Merrill from Merrill Sewing Machine Company to talk about how Merrill's using Canandy ERP to totally transform their business. Welcome to App Talks, Charlie. So, tell me about Merrill. Merrill is a 180 year old company uh, that I've been running for since 2004, and we primarily manufacture sewing machines. Uh, that was our core business 2004. Uh, and now we use Canandy and Salesforce to, to run everything in the shop. So what were some of the challenges you were facing when you started? In 2004, we were making 60 styles of sewing machines, selling them into 75 different countries. Almost all of them were customized, and everything was managed on index cards. That must have been an incredibly a difficult way to manage your business. It was a very difficult way to manage the business. And, and in fact, it wasn't so much managing the business as it was, it was barely, barely producing the things which people were demanding from us uh, and not having any, any real control over, over the business itself. Um, and that is a legacy of being a 180-year-old company. And we were very fortunate um, in, that, in, this, in this regard that people knew our products and knew what we were doing and we were able to order them at will, um, but there was no way to move forward on index cards. How did you find Salesforce? Uh, we put in a, a big ERP system to try to uh, address the index card issue, and it was a disaster. It was, uh, uh, it was incredibly expensive for us to, to run and maintain. It was incredibly inflexible. Um, a, business, a business like Mero, which is a small, medium-sized business that has all of the problems of a major multinational company needs to have flexibility in software in order to be able to accommodate all of the different pro processes that we have. And the ER, big ERP that we used was very inflexible. Um, and the worst part about it is that we couldn't get data out of it to see what was going on. So this big system that was inflexible also uh, made reporting very hard, or, or specific reports that we needed to see were very difficult for us to generate. And, and that made us somewhat blind to what was going on in the business. And, and one would argue that we were better off with index cards um, than, than with the ERP system because we spent so much time trying to manage this ERP system rather than being focused on the business. And so you had this, this ERP system that wasn't working for you and that led you to Salesforce? That's right. So the exercise of moving away from this ERP system meant exploring other options. And, um, and I experimented with just about everything I could find. And I put in a Salesforce trial. Um, after just a couple of days, I realized that it was a, it was a very extensible, flexible uh, software. Um, and a, little bit of, a little bit of looking into it, realized that it was built on force.com, um, and that was, that was the special sauce behind Salesforce. So we rolled it out to the sales teams very quickly, and after a couple of weeks, we were looking, my brother and I, who run the company, were looking at reports about what was going on in sales that we hadn't seen in, in six, six or seven years. And it was, it was extraordinary to be able to uh, see that sort of information uh, as quickly as we could, and I went out hunting on Force.com to see what else was there, what other what other functionality we could find, uh, and that's how I was introduced to Canandy. It was actually a reference. Um, uh, the Salesforce team here pointed me to a couple companies who were building ERP, and just by chance, I called into Canandy and I I got Sandy Kurtzig on the phone. Sandy gave me the confidence uh, to to trust what Canandy was doing. She understood how hard ERP was. And she had this vision that ERP could, as complicated as it was, could be an extensible and very usable and enabling software on force.com. And that the, the next generation of ERP was gonna look a lot different than the previous generation of ERP, which she was very familiar with. Uh, but I walked away from that conversation very, very confident that uh, that she was she was uh, creating a company that was going to tackle the the real difficult challenges of ERP and deliver something back that would would let me work on growing my company rather than fighting an ERP system. And since then, I have been nothing but impressed with the team at Canandy. I think that the standard that they set for service and for uh, how they how they manage their customers is is really extraordinary and and, and rare in the industry. And what were some of the initial results that you saw? Yeah. So the the most, the most important things that happened when we put in Canandy, first and foremost, we were able to watch our customers 
from the moment they were they expressed an interest in in the company or we worked on a marketing campaign and and we got a hold of them through to the point where they ordered things and and then we're able to build all sorts of nurturing campaigns to make them better better customers which which is really powerful when we look at the cost of, of developing a, a new customer um, compared to the cost of maintaining an Anyone, existing absolutely. one you, you, I mean, it's it's they're totally totally different cost structures. So once you've got a customer, being able to work with them and manage them is is really important. So right away we were able to take better care of good customers and also understand who who were not so good, um, and that was and that was important. Second thing, perhaps the 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 biggest change in the company from a, a process perspective is that instead of it taking several weeks for us to generate quarterly reports. Uh, we were able to generate. We are able to generate our reports in 25 minutes and make them very specific to whatever the the challenges we're facing in that particular period of time around product or market, and and that both gives us my brother and I a lot a lot more time to do other things. But it's it's gives us information which we're also able to act on. That's that's much more instructive, much more relevant to running the business. So tell me, how are you using Salesforce and Canandy today? So, Mero is is uh, more more diverse than just a sewing machine company. Mero has become a, uh, a sewing machine company and a incubator for startups. The Mero Sewing Machine Company builds, still builds uh, somewhat fewer sewing machines, but we build some 45 different models of machines. Most of them are customized. And we have a, uh, an inventory of 5,000 different parts that we use to build these machines. Um, and our sales cycle allows us to develop Custom, custom deliveries for just about everybody. But the startups require very different parts of this ERP system to work well. We have one that has a thousand SKUs and is, is effectively just a fulfillment, uh, a fulfillment engine where we keep inventory, we take orders in from online channels, we pick, pack, and ship them, and we get them out the door. We have another startup, which is a, which is a wool apparel company, and we, we design and develop all of the product in Canandy all of the engineering work for the product is kept in Canandy. Um, and, and we manage, since we build our own product overseas, we manage the, the production process and cycles in Canandy. And then we use it as, a, as again, conventional fulfillment. And then we have a, a third business that, that has 72,000 different SKUs. Wow. Yeah. And, and this is a, it's entirely an online exercise. And we manage all 72,000 items, largely for dropship, but, but some are kept in-house. Again, with Canandy and using it as a, as a, in this case, largely a dropship engine. So our MRP requirements are contemplating you know, something on the order of 85,000 different SKUs when we're looking at what, what our demand is, which is, which is not enormous, but it's a lot. It's and a it's lot, certainly yeah. more than you want to handle on index cards. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so how has it transformed the company? Yeah, the, it's, it's enabled, I mean, the, the most significant thing it's done is that it's enabled our operations to run cleanly and efficiently and give us as a company the opportunity to grow. Uh, my time and my team's time is spent on, on creating new businesses and turning Marrow into a, into a more relevant and more exciting brand. Um, the, the, a long time ago, in the very beginning, I, I decided that my mission was going to be to make sewing machines sexy and, um, you know, <laughs> talk about tilting at windmills. <laughs> but what that turned into building value and building value in stitching for Marrow, and that means developing products which allow customers to, to sew things and then communicate the value of what, of what they've sewn to people who are actually purchasing them in stores. Building these programs, uh, that, building the startups, um, building an innovative service program, which is an interesting, it's an interesting little story, but we discovered that uh, one of the big problems we had in our markets is there weren't, enough, there weren't enough mechanics out taking care of machines. So people had sewing machines all over the place, but nobody would service them. So we put a program in place where you could call us up and for a very low flat fixed fee, a, a, a box ships out to you, a marrow box. You drop your sewing machine in it with a return tag. It shows back up at our place. Uh, within three days, it's tr- completely stripped down like a gun down to nothing, put back together again. We give it a stamp of a, re- a marrow rebuilt approval and you get your sewing machine back fully rebuilt from marrow. And it's, it's allowed people who run our machines all over the country to be able to keep them running without having a local mechanic. We built that entire operation in Canandy as an application. 
So our, our ability as a company, how has it transformed us? Our ability as a company to add, to add new businesses, to augment existing businesses to better, to better serve our customers, um, and to look forward into the future as a, as a company who is going to be more diverse and be very comfortable that, that our new projects are going to be built on the back of software that's going to enable them to be successful rather than prevent it is, uh, I think this is the single biggest thing that, that's, that's changed at Merrill. So you mentioned the incubator program and how Salesforce and Canandia are helping you go in different areas and, and fire up new businesses. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so Merrill Sewing Machine Company makes sewing machines and spare parts, and we sell them all over the world, and it's, and it's a terrific business, and we work very hard to grow that, and there's, some, there's a great story about how software organized that, right? But it's a very difficult business. We make a sewing machine which competes against Chinese and Japanese sewing machines that, that cost far less than ours. And, and to grow marrow at the rate that we wanted to grow, we realized we needed to do two things. We needed to build a, a business plan around marrow that created new value in these machines. And we needed to add businesses to our, to our company that would allow us to, to grow into different spaces that were on different business cycles and that had, that had different, um, totally different customer bases so that, so that we would be able to become somewhat independent of uh, the sales cycles around, around a sewing machine company. And what informed this largely was the financial crisis of 2008. You know, when that happened and we saw how vulnerable we could be with the core business, diversification became a really a significant part Survival. of my job. Yeah. yeah. And so how, how, how does ERP impact this? Well, you can have an idea to build a new business, to, to, to develop a new product line, to add something to your company. But if you can't organize around it, it's, it's an idea. It's not, it's not something that you can execute on. And in, in the old world of, of software and of ERP, you could pay a, a, an integrator to come in and build processes around some new business venture that you're going you're to have and fund that. But that's expensive. And it's, it's, it's a real impediment to growth. So the magic of, of what we were able to do with Canandy is reduce the cost enormously to, to nearly nothing for us to take an idea, create organizational structure to develop that idea or that business, and then move it into the market and then adjust when it worked or didn't work based on, based on what our customers were saying or how the product was performing. And, and I mean, that's the... the the unsexy description of of the sexy stuff, which is, we're talking about building new businesses. We're talking about launching. I think we've we've launched fourteen new new businesses over the last over the last six years, um, and of those fourteen, seven are still running. We killed seven off. They weren't. They just weren't very good. You know, they didn't they didn't execute well. And when we made adjustments, we couldn't keep them going. And we've added uh, with Mero. Mero in Mero six years ago was was a sewing machine company that manufactured a, a line, you know a bunch of different sewing machines. In the last six years, it also has become part of our incubator project, and we've added, we've created an entirely new Mero that for the first time in forty years, because of what we've been able to do creatively, and and from an engineering perspective, uh, Mero is back in garment manufacturing all over the world. Instead of being in small niche markets, we're now in the very center. And it's because all of, of all of the creative work that we've done around Marrow to build value in stitching, which is very analogous to us launching an apparel brand or launching uh, an e-commerce program that, that, that where we pick pack and ship product. All of these things are new businesses that we've built out on ERP and, and organized in very different ways around ERP. And tell, tell me, I know you have multiple success stories, but tell me your, your favorite one. Fa so there are two different, two different favorite types of stories. Uh, my favorite story about how we used Canandy and software to do something that I couldn't have imagined doing it any other way uh, was we have, a, we have a startup called WoolPro. We manufacture merino wool garments. And WoolPro, we, um, we spent several years developing a line of or a type of wool, really cool fabrics. And then we design some really cool uh, products with them. Um, we do it all ourselves. We sew it all ourselves with all you know, our own machines. So it's, a, it's a really, it's a solid, beautiful brand and product line. 
but apparel, getting into the apparel space is it's a very hard. difficult thing. It's really hard, yeah. And and so we struggled with it. And 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 you know, we we weren't leading with the Mero brand name. We were leading with this new brand name of Woolpro, which nobody knew. Nobody didn't yeah. Right. So we have this it's a it's a classic startup. And we treated it like that. And we wanted to treat it like that. We wanted it to be successful on its own merit without it being something that so so anyway, for, for six months we're trying to bring this into the market and we're having a, a real hell of a time. And one Sunday morning in, in February this year, I was about to get on my bike, and I decided to put a post up on Reddit. Put a post up on Reddit that said, my brother and I have built this merino wool brand, and it, we're looking for brand ambassadors. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great story. It, it has you know, it's a great product, and, and we, you know, we love what we've done, and we're looking for people who want to give it a shot and, and let us know what they think of it. And I got on my bike and put my phone in my back pocket, and 10 minutes later, my phone exploded. And it was just, I mean, it, it was, I've never, I mean, it just started buzzing. And for the next hour and a half, it was buzzing with Reddit responses. And it got up to the first page of Reddit, and the site got 10,000 views in a wow. day. And in, in, a, in a moment, in an unscripted moment, Woolpro became something that a whole lot of people were engaged around. And 400 people applied to be brand ambassadors. This was a Sunday. And I... On Monday morning, I walked into the company and said, so this happened. <laughs> now what do we do? And so you know what we did? By the end of Monday, we had built three applications to manage brand ambassadors, to manage a marketing program around Reddit and social media, and to manage the pipeline of uh, what would be sample products and the issuance of sample products out to these brand ambassadors as separate objects, separate applications that all work together and tied back into the system. And, and I think this is the really important and interesting point. Many people have ideas about how to do something and how to build something. Executing on the idea, organizing around That's the idea part, yeah. is the hard part. And what I was able to do was take this thing, that this spark, you know, this light, lightning in a bottle, and hand it over to the company. And the company organized around it almost organically in one day. And by Tuesday morning, it was no longer mine. That whole thing was now customer service and, and purchasing and, and in accounting and brand ambassadorship was this formal organized program. And it looked to anybody from the outside like we had spent months and months and months preparing for this. And, 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 it's, and it's one of my favorite stories because we did the same thing that would have taken months and months and months to do. And so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't at all misleading. We did organize completely around this, and we created an experience for every one of those people who became brand ambassadors that was a, a very thorough, very detailed, very personal and involved experience, and those brand ambassadors have launched Woolpro. And, you know, and I'm sitting here and uh, talking to you, and Woolpro from February until today went from being an unknown brand to a brand that, that is, is making its way around the world as a as a as a real viable wool apparel product line. And that was, and that was a, great, a great story of organization around ERP. The second thing, second ex interesting thing that, that we did that I think is, is, is worth mentioning, Mero, Mero's mission is to build value in stitching. And you know, a long time ago I decided I wanted to try to make sewing machines sexy. And what I really meant is that I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to create a value around a sewing machine that people hadn't perceived before. And the way we did that is by branding stitching. And so we created an entire line of specialty sewing machines that create special stitches that, that brands can market. It's a somewhat complicated business that you layer on top of the sale of a sewing machine. And without going into too much detail, because we don't have enough time, building that entire business model of, of a, a licensing model around a branded stitch that's going to be developed on these sewing machines that are then going, then, go, then going to be used you know, broadly in the market for production around the world was something we were easily able to organize and do in this ERP system. And, and it reminds me of a, of a phrase that, that I heard somebody say, but in business, ERP is everywhere. It touches everything. Mm -hmm. And every one of these new ideas needs to be organized around ERP if you want it to be durable, if you want it to be something that isn't a one-off, uh, you know, simple, simple exercise. And this project with Mero to create branded stitching with this vision that consumers will walk into a store and they will see a, they will see a garment and they'll see the designer and they'll see the fabric type and they'll see a tag on it that says, this has Mero stitching. This is going to happen this fall. 
And for the first time, I think, in the history of garments, we branded stitching in an innovative, creative, value-added way so that garments are actually going to be better and be advertised as such. And we did this because we have Canandy and Salesforce and this software structure that enabled us to have the time to be creative, to organize that, those creative ideas into something that we could, we could execute on, and then very importantly, when we brought it out into the market, adjust it because we didn't get any of that right the first time out. Of course. And so we were able to easily adjust what we were doing to accommodate what the market really wanted to see. And both of those projects are, are new successes on the back of a whole lot of work that went into to, to getting to where we are now. And the least amount of work was the work around software, which is the complete inverse of where our, my company was in 2007, 2008, 2009. One of the things we like to do on App Talks, Charlie, is do some peer-to-peer -peer advice. What advice would you give me if I was kind of in the situation you were in and were looking for an ERP solution? I think there'd be three things. I think that the, the, first, the first thing is if you can avoid it, don't migrate your data. You know, everybody's going to chafe at that. I, wanna, I, wanna know, I, wanna, I want my, my, my sales reports. I want to know where I've been. Dump it out into an Excel file and focus, focus on moving your company into software that can help you do new things rather than focus on, on spending a lot of money and a lot of time um, bringing, over, bringing over information which isn't going to be as useful as, as most people anticipate it's going to be. Uh, the time, uh, the, a lot of the foot dragging that we did was how are we going to move our information over. And what we were missing, the opportunity cost, is that all of that new functionality, all of the all of the, the, the kind of the liberation that we were going to experience, we waited probably a year and a half longer than we needed to to get there. And the fact is that we have all of the records of the old information that we periodically look at, but it doesn't doesn't very much inform what we do going forward. So I would say don't don't move data over if you can possibly avoid it. Come up with a hundred reasons not to, rather than rather than stick to the one yeah, reason exactly. that you, that you want to. Um, the second thing is is that when you, when you move into a, a, a software like, like a Canandy, you know, and you, or you move into Canandy, you don't, you don't need to be preoccupied with, with software development. You, know, you, can, you, can, you can manage and map your business processes yourself. And this is, this is really important. I think that everybody's business is unique. But being fixated on how unique it is and how specialized it is is a is another is another place that you spend people will spend too much time yeah. uh, too much time uh, working on things that are not necessarily going to be particularly useful you can do a lot of it yourself and take your time to do it but the third thing is is the most important and that's that uh, you're going to anybody who puts in who puts in software that's a, that's this sophisticated unless you do all of these things is going to be iterating through versions of things that don't work iterating through these, these, these points of failure. And that's the fun part. That's the, I mean, that's the part that, that you need to get excited and engaged around. And, and I think as a, you know, a, a piece of advice is look, look to do that and be disciplined about that and make that part of the mission to get to where you need to be down, somewhere down the road because you'll find success. You'll find a great deal of success if you're willing to, to do things and try things and adjust things. Yeah. And then, and then move on from there. And what does the future look like? Obviously, you got, you're still in the transformational process. You've got all these great incubator things spinning up. And, and what, what do you see in the, in the future? So the future, the future for Mero is branded stitching and building value in stitching. And we are going to be building, uh, we're going to be building all sorts of, of new products over the next three or four years that create unique and, and uh, uh, terrific value points in the market for sewn products. The startups are, it's just the beginning of us developing these, this startup process. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to do, I think we'll probably try to do one every six months, and, and, and that's an exciting thing. But perhaps the most exciting thing that we have sitting in front of us is the development of a, of a technology and textile lab where we're, gonna, we're building a design center to bridge together the Internet of Things, uh, complicated new technical soft goods, and then production and design know-how to create a center in Massachusetts where people can come, entrepreneurs, uh, established brands, 
students right out of school who are looking to, to do something creative to develop and design products infused with technology to build that next generation of, of soft goods which people will be wearing and using in five years. And in doing that, in building that lab and organizing that lab, we'll be building in Fall River, Massachusetts, the production facilities to be able to produce much of this. And so what we see going forward um, is, for Mero, is, is a company that's going to be much more diversified than it is right now, and hopefully, and very significantly, impact, impact our entire industry, not just with sewing machines, but with, with a design development process that will bring technology into the, into the apparel space that will then give Mero more ideas and more reasons to develop new products. So we're very excited about what we have, what we have looking forward to. That's fantastic. Thanks, Charlie, very much. I really enjoyed speaking with you. And thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you on the next App Talks.